ministries that are represented here that are about to put on wings and fly. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, a man among men, a father to fathers, are you listening to me? One of God's generals in the army of the end time. Champion for the assembly. Slap your hands together. Bring our father in the Lord. Reverend Mercy Maduba. If you don't shout, if you don't clap, if you don't celebrate, you might not get what you want. Come on. Celebrate. Shout. Hallelujah. Just what he said. He will do. Yeah, he's gonna reveal everything he says. Don't you give up on him. Cause he won't give up. He's holding on to you. He's laying Hallelujah. I want to thank God for yet another night. And um, I don't know about you, but for me, it's been a wonderful day. This morning, the protocol team woke me up. They came 45 minutes ahead of time. Those people are serious minded. No wonder they put a soldier in their midst. They keep the time they are there to make sure things go the way they are planned to go. They drove me to where I needed to pick the passports of my family. You know, because the other day I applied for the renewal of their British visas. And I opened it and they gave them 10 years. Hallelujah. Visas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So until 2025, <laughs> they wouldn't need to apply for British visa. Hallelujah. And I said it's a new season. Yes, sir. The Lord of favor and the Lord of open doors. We cause you to have your door open for 10 years ahead of you. When others are writing petition to have one year open door, the Lord will open the thing to 10, 20 years ahead of you. And then I had a meeting with some elders who made some decrees and declarations connected with the 24 elders in heaven. And declare that it shall be well for Nigeria. Whether Satan likes it or not. If he likes, let him cry. It won't change it. It will be well for Nigeria. And whatever you have gone through today. If it was not very pleasant. We command a change to take place. That whatever made you unhappy today will make you celebrate tomorrow. Amen. That out of that unpleasant experience, God will yet glorify his name. Amen. And a promotion will come to you in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. It's one of the unique days that the Lord has given to us. And we have every reason to celebrate it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, we may be seated. I want to thank Apostle Ojo for spoiling me a little. I want to thank the, prot uh, the protocol team on each and every one of you. I may not have the time to meet everyone who has made contributions towards my comfort. From those who provided the cars, to those who drove, to those who were there 
for me at all times. But I stand here to bless all of you. Because you have sown into the Lord and into the life of someone precious to him. The Lord will cause you to have a great harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will cause children and everybody important to you to be honored like the way you have sown honor into my life because whatever a man sows, that's what he will reap. And he will shield you from anything that will bring reproach in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you with the blessings of heaven above and with the good things of the earth beneath. The God whom I serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, will not stop at those people. He will cause the generations to come to celebrate in him using your name also. Because of what he will do in your lives. Thank you for sowing into my life. And, and to all of you, indirectly as well, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Just like you've been told, I will encourage you to, if you can, uh, read books. And read good books. The difference between the illiterate who didn't go to school. Or, let me put it this way. There's no difference between the illiterate who didn't go to school and the one who went to school and does not read. Because that's a common factor about two of them. They don't read. So, if you want to make a difference in your life, read good books. Read good books. Each time I'm moving anywhere, I carry one book I'm reading. There's always a book with me that I'm reading. And it's very, very good. So, I suggest that you make a stop at the book stand. You may find something that will bless your life. There are many good books there on spiritual warfare, particularly in this season. I shared with the elders reasons why we must war and fight. Is it on prayer? There's prayer power there. But one of those books that you will read and they will electrify your spirit. You know, that's a very new book that most of you have not seen, The Minister's Wife. And I encourage every daughter of Zion to read that book because one way or the other, your husband is a minister. Either as a pastor of a local church or a worker in the church or serving the Lord in the marketplace. And you need to know your role to make him effective. And there are also CDs there. I will not want to take any book back to Portacourt. And if you think I'm going to leave him at this office, this time I will not do that. So go and buy them now. I know many of you have already gotten some of them. But read them if you have them. Press the name of the Lord. We also have a magazine that talks about communication in marriage and things that make a marriage healthy. Um, it's something like an upgrade to what we wrote in Killing the Marriage Killers. So, I encourage you to get a copy of the magazine and study those areas that have to do with marriage. I sincerely believe that the word divorce was never meant for Christians and should never come near us. And as God lives, should never come to this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. So, get things that will help you nourish and maintain your marriages. I'm sure that uh, you will enjoy it. And for those who are seeking to know God's will for their lives in the area of marriage, I want to encourage you to get a copy of Foundations Necessary for Successful Marriage. If you do what things you ought to do to get married, then the right person will show up very quickly. God has been waiting for you because you're not yet prepared. So prepare yourself and then things will begin to happen. Amen. Amen. All right. Are we ready tonight? <laughs> okay. 
turn with me to First Kings 22. First Kings 22. And then we're going to look at verses 5 to 8. Also Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please inquire for the word of the Lord today. That's another way of saying bring the effort. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to fight, or shall I refrain? So they said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There's still one man, Micaiah, the son of Emir, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. Because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say such things. This night I want to talk to us on the different ways that God can speak to you. And the fact that the effort protects you from being deceived by false prophets. Many years ago, wanted to get American driver's license and um, I did the written test went out on the road I drove with the police and all that they came back and scored it and gave me my driver's license then several years later I came back to renew my license over there you don't stay at your home and pay an agent and they, they get you something you have to go by yourself then they gave me a test to be sure that I still know what I said I knew before. And this time, this test was on the computer. And then you read the question, and then you answer. If you get answer correct, they say correct answer. If you don't get it right, they said wrong answer. So you get your answers on the spot. And by the time you press finish, you see your score. The effort is something that when you wear it, you get instant answers as to what the mind of God is. Yesterday we began to see how King David will not go out without asking the Lord, shall I go or shall I not? And if I shall go, how? By who? And he taught his children that after him, they continued to do the same thing. Jehoshaphat was his great-grandson. And he must have learned from their great-grandfather that kings don't move around without the effort. Maybe they wear it inside and cover it with the royal apparel. And when <laughs> jungle matures, they remove that uh, decoration and bring the real one to ask God, where are we going? Because we read from the scripture that David was dancing and worshipping the Lord wearing his effort. And we also read yesterday that the most important tool of every priest, including Abieta, was the effort. That he forgot everything else in his life and took it when he was running for his dear life. Now, how do you press, how do you get answers when people begin to tell you this is what God is saying. To know which one is from the Lord and which one is not from the Lord is by putting on your spiritual effort. How did Jehoshaphat get to know that 400 men who gave prophecies were not speaking the mind of God? The first person came. Oh, Kaduna, 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 Kano, 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 Kano. 
He prophesied. And he pressed his effort. He said the wrong answer. The person came, Baba Sukara, Baba Sandal, Ugel, 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 Ugel. He pressed his effort. He said the wrong answer. The other person said, Baba Sabba, Kako, Kusuku, Asaba, Saba, 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 Saba. He pressed his effort. He said the wrong answer. 40, 50, 100, 200, 300. He will press. He said the wrong answer. Until all of them, wrong answer. Uh, he said to the king, do you have anyone who has a, a word, who can inquire from the Lord, not from their stomach? Because all, of the, all these ones that I've had, my effort said, wrong answer. If you have your effort on in the spirit, you will put all the false prophets out of business. Because when they say the thing they say, you check your effort. You will know whether it's correct answer or wrong answer. The reason why we fall prey to them is that our effort is not even active or we're not putting it on or we're not conscious we're supposed to carry the effort in our spirit. But if you carry the effort in your spirit and people say the things they want to say, you say to your effort, what? The effort will say correct answer or wrong answer. And it protects you from falling prey to deceptions. No, because there are many people that have the mannerisms, the language, the charisma, the attire and the dressing, intimidating prophetic attires. That when you see them, before even they talk, you say God has come. But if you carry your effort, you can say, what's going on? And the spirit of God in you, the spiritual effort will say to you, this is fake. Others around you will say, why do you always say this? Why do you say this? They don't know you are putting on your effort. Covered in your jacket, covered in your suit covered in your blouse whatever attire you are putting on inside your spirit is your effort and a powerful instrument by the holy spirit of inquiring from the lord to know which way to go when you take your effort with you it will protect protect you from being deceived from being swindled this 419 people Many times they have also swindled Christians, believers. You should be, be able to, by the time they talk, 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 you say, my effort, what do you say? He said, 419. Fake. I came back one day. Now, one of my spiritual daughters, I grew up in her house. You know, Went and hid somewhere. And I was like, who is acting like Adam and Eve in this house? The other said that some people called her on the phone and said they were the auntie's tailor and that they had accident. She should send credit quickly so that he can settle a few people there. And out of her own, you know, soft heart, she began to send credit. One five, one thousand, MTN. He said, "No, the, the people are very difficult. Please send me eight ten, two thousand." And she was sending until she sent eight thousand naira credits. She was doing that when the husband came back. You know, and um, the husband said, "Why are you running up and down?" She said, "I want to buy credit for who?" He said, "For my auntie's teller. Why? And she told the husband. The husband took the phone and said, yes, how much more do you want? And the young man said, for 2,000. So okay. Now, what did he say happened to you? She had an accident. Sorry. So where is your wife? He said, he's at home. So can you remind me the name of your wife? Ah, don't you know my wife? 
said, no, I know your wife. Now, just said, remind me her name, because I know her name. Ah, uh-uh, bros. He said, I am so and so's husband. Uh, do you know what I do? He said, why are you talking like that? So he put it on the phone and said to the, to the wife, if this man is, that's your auntie's tailor, he knows I'm a pastor. He knows I know the wife's name. He could have told me the wife's name. He normally calls me a pastor, not bros. So, can't your effort talk? Hello? When you put on your effort, you'll be protected from those who use British number and call. I don't know how they do arrange that thing, but you see plus four four, and the person is greeting you. <laughs> now, can do? With plus four four. There are many facts today around the world, whether it's in London or in the US or everywhere. Now I want to let you know that there are fake prophets everywhere in the world. They were there in the days of Jehoshaphat. They are not Nigerians. They are in Israel. Or they were in Israel. They are everywhere in the world. You know, I used to think that Israel is a holy land until they stole my phone. They picked So I know that there are many thieves in the Holy Land too. Crocro eyes like that. There was a sister who went with us and stayed back when we were moving as a group to buy things. And I said to her, it's not time to buy things. Don't be alone. So I went back to collect her. You know, people who just won't listen. And then these young people came you know, surrounded me and was asking me, buy this, buy this, buy this. There were so many, buy this. And I don't know when they were saying, buy this, buy this. That there were others who were not buying, who were picking pockets. In the holy land. There are people who will like champion faith assembly and like the girls there and the way they worship. And they want to come and marry one. And they will dress and come to church three times. And then said to them that God spoke to them. That you are the one they should marry. Press your effort. Say, and see whether you get wrong answer. Or correct answer. Because you should be able to make use of your effort to know when a fake suitor shows up. One that will come and pretend to be a nice man and one month after the marriage he refused to come into church he has gotten what he's looking for you need to make use of your effort to be able to choose business partners not one who will be begging you that he may join with you when he comes into your business he now wants to throw you out and take everything you have worked hard for for many years and you say, but God, why? Okay, you, where was your effort? Why did you not inquire of the Lord? Why was your effort not active? Why? Your effort is instrument of knowing what is the mind of God concerning everything in life. You want to make an investment? You want to buy stock? Consult your effort. Should I buy in this season? Is it a good time? Must it be from this company? Because God is interested in everything you do. If you could take time to ask him, he will be glad to talk to you about it. He will. John chapter 10, verse 27. There he says, my sheep hear my voice. I want you to find it for yourself. John 10, verse 27. My sheep, if you 
are a member of the household of faith. If Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and Abba Father, God the Father is your Father. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He will speak to you. He will speak to you. In verse 5 of that same chapter, he says, Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. They will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. You must be close enough to the Lord that you know his voice so well that when somebody fakes it, you will know. Yesterday during the drama, somebody was faking the pastor's voice. And he was sitting down there and laughing. The person tried. But if you know his voice very well, you will know that that was not his voice. The person used his words, but not his voice. Hello? If you are close enough to the Lord, if you are effective in making use of your effort, no matter how the enemy fakes the voice of the Lord, he can use the words and he cannot use his voice. Jesus said, the voice of a stranger, they will not follow because it will be strange to them and they don't follow unfamiliar voices. Let me quickly share with you 18 different ways you can hear from the Lord. You can make use of your efforts, uh, your, your effort. Number one, audible voices. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 21, Genesis 22, 11 to 19, we, we read where God spoke to two different people audibly. He called out to Samuel by name, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel heard it, and Samuel felt like he was being called by the boss, Eli. And then he ran to Eli. Three different locations. And the man figured out that since nobody else is in the house, it must be the Lord. And told him how to respond to the voice of the Lord. This is not very common. But then, it happens. It happens even today. I spoke to somebody very recently who shared that with me. I, there's somebody in this house who had a chat with me not long ago who had God like that. It happens. And God may want to choose that method to speak to you. Number two, true inward witness by the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. This is called the inner personality. In Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. If your spirit has not been suppressed by negligence, if you have been a friend to the Holy Spirit and you have a good relationship, your spirit will be in harmony with the Holy Spirit. And through your inner spirit, you can hear him very well. When ministering healing in a meeting I don't hear audible voices but I hear in my spirit what I need to know recently I was in Cameroon and I had finished ministering praying for people I was walking out and I had in my spirit that there are three people that they have dug their graves it's a matter of time and they'll be buried I had almost given away the microphone and I excused them and took the microphone and I said there are three people here they've dug your graves it's a matter of time and you be cut off and you won't live long but God has made me to know it and I intercept it and I command the grave to, uh, to be closed and I command the power of God to strip you of that grave clothes and then allow you to live your life normally at the count of three, 
I command that now to take effect. The three of them were thrown up and then they began to roll on the floor. And then I asked them to allow them just for a minute or two. And when they come down, I gave them the microphone and walked away. Nobody came and wrote a piece of paper and gave me. Nobody talked to me audibly. But I was walking away and I heard it in my voice. There are three people. The enemy had dug their grave. And so you can hear. You can hear God deep in your spirit. It's possible. So, try to be quiet in your spirit. Not noisy. Because he can be speaking and you are carried away by things. But even where you are singing and you are worshipping, even when you are driving on the road and you are talking with someone, you can be listening. One day, a lawyer came to see me with a problem. And then he came and he greeted me. He said wonderful things about the work we are doing. And when he finished with that, with the, all his praises, he said, thank you very much. I just came to greet you. He was walking away. I said, excuse me, that's not why you came. Because when he was about to go, the Holy Spirit said, ask him why he came. So I asked him, that's not why you left your house and came. You came for something else. So can you tell me what it is? He looked at me, smiled, and started looking on the ground. And then he looked up again and said to me, how did you know? I had my effort on. So I said, can we go back so you can tell me why you came? He said, okay. Just like that. So you can listen to the spirit inside. During the Nigerian Biafran Civil War, I went out to fetch water at a well. First, okay, I, I, I knew the aircrafts pretty well that were, you know, Biafran aircrafts. And so I could know one that wasn't a Biafran aircraft. So an aircraft flew across and was very low. And it said it was a military aircraft. And it had Biafran flag on it to deceive. And I knew that wasn't, that wasn't it. So I decided not to fetch the water, but to go away and take cover and watch what will happen in the next few minutes. And I had a voice in my spirit that said to me, your younger brother you see at the well, you will not see him again. I couldn't handle that. I ran back and said to my brother, follow me, let's get out of this place. He looked at me from head to toe and said, you're a coward. I'm his senior brother. I just couldn't move. I had a voice in my spirit. So I held him by his trouser at the back, jacked him up on my shoulder, and carried him. He was slapping my head. I was running. Got into the bush, slammed him on the floor, and pinned him and held him there. We were there fighting when that aircraft came, bombed and killed everybody at the well. Tall human beings, their intestines came out. Legs were thrown up and down. Blood was everywhere. And I dragged him. And I came back to the well. I said, the man who is not a coward, this is where you could have died. And I left him there and walked away. He's still alive till today. But I could have lost him that day. I'm glad I took the slapping and the beating from my younger brother. But he's alive. It will help you save yourself from unnecessary tears. Unnecessary pain. You will save lives. And the life you may save may be yours. Or that of your husband, or that of your wife, or, that, or those of your children. You will hear a voice. And it will be so strong. If you are sensitive, and because you, you need to learn, just like Samuel had to learn to respond to the voice of the Lord. From that day, he never went to anybody to ask whether it was the Lord or not anymore. 
Once you discover that this is the way God has spoken to you, cherish it. Have a value for it. Long for it. Celebrate it. Nobody likes to go where you're not celebrated. If the Holy Ghost knows that he's celebrated by you, he will always come to you. And deep in your heart, he will speak. This will distinguish you from others. You can be on a queue and he said to you, get out of this queue. Immediately. And you leave there and go away. A few minutes after you walk away from there, something happens. Somebody begins to think, maybe you knew it would happen. You were just obeying the Lord, speaking to you through your spiritual effort. It's not just inquiring from the Lord. The effort gives direction. The effort protects you if you listen. The effort makes you know the mind of God. And the mind of God is to keep you safe. It's to show you business strategies that are not common to others. To show you what to invest in and what not to invest in and at what time. You just do it. And then he can tell you right now, take your money back, sell your stock. And you do. And one week after you have sold your stock and got your money, the whole thing will crash. And you walk away smiling. And people will be looking at you. You're a wonder to your world. Because your effort is effective. And you're making use of it. Number three, requested circumstances. Time came when Abraham sent his servant to go and marry Rebekah for Isaac. Genesis 24, 42 to 51. He said to the Lord, anyone, any girl who will come here, I'm very thirsty. And the animals I came with are very thirsty. He went with 10 loads of animals, camels, that were loaded with gold and silver, trinkets and things to, that every woman will want. He so said, the one now that will come, when I ask for water, will give me water. And then will also offer to give water to my camels. Let that one be the one. Now, when you ask that, heaven will take note and then hold back all the fake ones and then cause the right one to respond so that you will know that this is what the one that God has sent to you. And even if the enemy penetrates in any way, your effort will say wrong answer. This is not the correct one. So when Rebecca showed up, offered him water, and offered to give the camels water, he knelt down and said, Lord, thank you. And when he asked her, whose daughter are you? It happened that they are from a family that Abraham will want to have his daughter, and his son married for him. They know God, they love God because before they release Rebecca, they bless her that her children shall possess the gates of their enemies. You can't speak heavenly language if you are not from there. Number four, you can hear from the Lord through prophecy. God has given us the gift of prophecy. Right from creation, man was given the grace for prophetic you know, lifestyle. God created everything and asked Adam to give them names. The man was not there. He did not go to university to, stop, uh, to study uh, botanical sciences, to know the names of leaves and, and all the, the names of animals. No. But prophetically, he, he knew the names for every animal. He didn't run out of names. He knew. And if he didn't know, the Bible said that whatever he called them, that's what they became. He began to prophetically give them names that became their names. The first man. And when Jesus died and we got born again, that grace was restored to you. So that it's easy to walk into the realm of the prophetic. And God can speak to you through prophecy. Today we have the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International around the world today. The man who started it wanted to start a fellowship 
for businessmen as because he was a farmer. And then he tried, invited people to come for the fellowship. Nobody came. But then he went back home and said to close the to, to give up the idea. And the wife was playing a keyboard and began to prophesy. I said, my son, hear me and hear me well. When your, husband, when your wife calls you my son, then you know that she is not talking as your wife. Amen. The man, so, the man then sat down and began to listen. And now God told him what will happen with that fellowship in the years to come. And asked him to go back and have that meeting again. After that prophetic word, he received a phone call. A man said, I will give you a printing press so that you can print a magazine free for those who will be coming for your meetings. And that phone call, and that phone call. So from some prophetic words, we can inquire from the Lord, we can hear what God has to say. A friend of Benihin came to visit me about a month ago. Actually, he'll be flying into Port Harcourt this weekend. And why did he come? The Lord said to him where he is in, in Seattle, Washington, to come. And he came. And, and I said to the Lord, but he didn't tell me anything about this. So as I was talking with him, he mentioned that he was going to see someone. I said, okay, why not go to see that person? On your way out, we will talk. I told my wife, I called my children, and I said, I don't know why the Lord didn't tell me about this. Let's pray. So as we began to pray, two of them began to prophesy concerning him. And I had my effort on. And I touched my effort. He said, correct answer. So I touched my wife, I said, please record these things. When the man finished his visit and then came back to me on his way back to the U.S. And I said to them, we had prophetically from the Lord concerning you the following. We made a copy and gave him. He started crying. He said, everything there is correct. And I think that's why I came. So, Philip had four daughters, and they were all four, three, that they were all raised to be very strongly prophetic girls. So you can raise your children to be very prophetic. You can raise your sons and guard them. Very prophetic. One day you could be eating on the dining table, and one of your children will look at you and say, Dad, I hear the Lord say that there are three people who will come to your office today. The second man is a fake. But he has a very smooth tongue. And his proposal will look charming. It's all fake. When you see an eight-year-old child tell you that, then you know it won't be that child talking. And if you have your effort on, you could hear wrong answer or correct answer. There will be a witness in your spirit that this is genuine or not. And if you have raised your children right, they will know not to speak when it is, not to toy with the name of the Lord, not to speak when it is not real. It happens. So prophetic words. Yes, there are people today who are, who are fooling people around like they do on the TBN sometimes. Oh, send me a hundred dollars. And I'm going to give you God's word for you. Just, just send us $500. Look at the address there. Just, just, okay, now pick up your credit card. Just swipe it. $500, man. And I'll give you $500 worth of prophecy. If you, if you swipe $1,000, man, I'm going to give you 1,000 words from the Lord. Really? When did God's word become something you can do auction? One thousand dollars, five thousand, hundred dollars. When did we begin to sell prophetic words? 
And people send, people send quick, quick. People. Gullible people send. But does it mean that there are not times when God will ask you to sow a seed? And it's from God. No. There are times like that. There are times like that. When God wants to really bless you, he can ask you to. But not too often will he ask you. So on your own, you should be able to choose. Like Abraham taught his children. So whenever you meet God, sow a seed. So look at the Bible. Each time Abraham had an encounter with the angel of the Lord, he would go and raise an altar and offer a sacrifice. He taught his children that even when they had backslided in the days of the judges, Gideon met an angel of the Lord. He said, if you are of the Lord, wait for me. He ran back home and prepared the sacrifice, killed the lamb, and then offered it to the Lord and watched to see if he would take the sacrifice. And the angel used the staff and touched the stone and fire came out from the stone, took the sacrifice because fire is God's means of transportation. He took it. And the angel went into the fire and traveled back to heaven. So sometimes you don't need to wait. Sometimes it is you, like King Solomon did, when they went to the mount of the Lord to offer sacrifices, in appreciation to the Lord, he offered 1,000 sacrifices. Because that throne could have gone to Absalom. And his father could have been killed. And God preserved David and he came to him. And God said, no, this sacrifice is worthy enough to invite me to come physically myself. And God came down to meet him. God did not ask for it. He just gave it to him. Prophetic words. Number five, dreams. Someone like Joseph, Daniel, Stephen, Cornelius, Peter, and many others received their messages and instructions and guidance through dreams. Genesis 37, 5 to 9. We see where God spoke to Joseph in the dream. Something that helped him become a prime minister. That kept him focused. He, he hid the dream the Lord gave him. And it helped him to go through everything in life until he got to where he was. Daniel was like that. Stephen in Acts 7, 55 was like that. Remember also that when Jesus was born, God had to meet Joseph in a dream. When Herod wanted to kill him, God had to meet Joseph in a dream. So dream can be a powerful way through which God can communicate with you. And if you have a strong and clean dream life, now polish it, sensitize it, and make use of it. And sleep in the night with a pad beside your bed and a torch and a pen. When you have that dream that God wants you to make use of, he will wake you up. So that you can write it down. But if he wakes you up two times and you don't write it down, then he will stop. Because you have no regard for it. Why do you need to write it down? Because many times when the day breaks, you will forget the dream. And you will be like the kings of Babylon looking for a Daniel to remind you the dream that you had and forgot. The dreams will come to pass. But then you forgot it and will not prepare for it. Dreams have shaped nations. Dreams have promoted many. Dreams kept Daniel at the top of government in Babylon for many successive generations, dispensations, and regimes. It was dream that brought Joseph to the high place in Egypt. He could dream, he could interpret the dreams. So, your dream could take you to any place. Your dream can take you to any place. I remember when Tifolu um, Segun Obasanjo was the president of Nigeria. And we were going to the Sunday where we were going to have the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. We woke up in the morning and my 
first daughter said to me, Dad, last night I saw the head of state shot in a parade. And it was that time when there were prophecies and things saying that he would die and so on and so on, die and so on and so on. So I tried to shake it off. And I was eating on my dining table. God said to me, call him. Ask him not to take the parade. And that was on a Saturday morning. So I called him. And I said to him, tomorrow, don't take the parade. He said, Pastor, why? I said, if you want to know why, ask your deputy to take the parade and see if he will take it. When I said that, he was quiet. And after a while, he said, okay. The next morning, he asked his vice president to take the parade. That one refused. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it's possible through dreams. You can get messages. It works today as before. You can save the life of a the head of state, the life of anybody, your own life. You can. I was in Ebony State a few days ago. That was two weeks ago. Dr. Mokbai and myself were in Enugu to organize prayers for Nigeria. We had close to 10,000 people at Opera Square, something like that. And then he headed for Uyo and headed to Ebony State. And then one of my staff was supposed to go to Port Harcourt, go back to Port Harcourt. That night, the father called him, who is a pastor in Baeza. He said, As I saw you in the dream where we came to collect your corpse and tow your vehicle from a pit last, you know, last night. So, he called me and said to me, this is what my father said. I said, you know what? Call him back and ask him, Tell him you are, you are about coming back to Port Harcourt. Tell him whether you must, you must come back to Port Harcourt. He called the father. The father said, he should stay. He better stay with me and not come back. And that my staff knows how to speed. We are praying that God will deliver him from the spirit of speed. He drives like Jehu. He, I don't know whether he doesn't control the car. He just puts one hand and the other hand on his laps. And he starts flying. Maybe God knew that on his way, alone, driving alone, maybe he will fall asleep. Or he will enter into a ditch or something. And his car will some assault. And then he will be dead in a, one of those gullies. And then we'll have to go and pick his cops in the car. The father saw it. Called him. And they told me, and I said, come on, follow it up. And he stayed with me, went with me to Ebony State, and I asked him to drive behind me as so we go back to Port Harcourt. He's still alive. What do you do with your effort? God didn't just leave every, any generation that serves the Lord. He he gives them the effort in one way or the other. Number six, visions. There are five types of visions. The first one is the natural vision. The second one is the inner vision. The third one is open vision. The fourth one is the night vision. And the fifth one is the trans vision. The first one, which is natural vision, is the act or power of imagination. With an unusual discernment of foresight. Whereby you have in your senses a manifestation of something immaterial. You can see where you are going as a leader. You know the destination others don't see. And so when things are happening on the way, they say go back. You are not likely to accept their suggestion because you are already seen where you are going. And you are already seeing yourself arrive there. So that will help you go through the turbulence. First the difficulties. 
when others don't see what you see. Power of imagination. Where there's no vision, the people perish. And every one of us must have a vision. And sometimes they call it a dream, but it's not a dream. They say the poorest person is not the person who doesn't have money in the bank account. But it's the one who doesn't have a vision. You don't have a place you are heading to. Number two, the inner vision. This is a situation where God paints a picture. You can see it in the inner man or spirit man. You see the picture. In Paris, an architect drew the building plan of an important edifice. And then before they finished the construction, he died. On the day they were dedicating it, the president of the country said to her, to the wife, we wish your husband was alive to see this building. She said he saw it, otherwise he couldn't have drawn it. You are seeing it now that the building is finished. But he saw it before he began to draw it. Every architect must see the building before they start drawing. And they see it inside them. And they start drawing. Number three, open vision. Open vision comes when your eyes are wide open. It's like watching a movie screen as it displays a scene that God wants to show you. The National General Secretary of uh, the General Council of Assemblies of God Church, Ghana, came to my conference in Port Harcourt. As the message was going on, he was touching the wife. D don't you see that writing? Don't you see? The wife said, I don't see anything. He said, see that thing. Read it. The wife said, I don't, are you okay? He said, okay, let me read it for you. He read it for the wife. I said, are you not seeing it? The wife said, I'm not seeing it. So he asked for the wife a pad. And he wrote what he saw written there. As soon as he put full stop, the thing disappeared. That thing was an instruction from the Lord of what to do when he gets back to Ghana. On his way back at Motla Mohammed International Airport, he called me. With a crying tone, I became afraid. I don't know what has happened to him. Man of God, what is the problem? He said, it's not a problem. He said, what I've been seeking God for 23 years, I received it in this conference. Direction. So it's not only Bethesar in Babylon. Today, in my time, in my meeting, somebody will see a handwriting, a letter from heaven on, on the wall in this country. I know a professor at Oka in Anambra State who told me that one day he came out in the evening and saw a, set, no, a full sentence written on the sky. And he read it and called the wife to come and see. Sometimes you who ought to read and see and use it is the only one who sees. Sometimes someone else may be able to see. But most times it's the one that is the owner of the message that sees. It's like a movie. You watch it. It's clean and clear. Being projected from heaven to you. It's called open vision. Number four, the night vision. The night vision is what we call the dream. As you lay sleeping in the night, then God gives you pictures and takes you to places. Number five, the trans vision. The trans vision occurs when your natural abilities are frozen so that God can minister whatever is needed. Sometimes it happens when you fall under the anointing. Your natural abilities are frozen and God takes you on a tour. Assuming you are an unbeliever and you are arguing there is no hell, you come to church and the power of God can hit you and you are on the floor. And the angels will carry you and take you on a tour of hell in five minutes. When you wake up, you tell people there is hell. Sometimes it could be a tour of heaven. Sometimes it can take you to a meeting where they are plotting against you. You see all their faces. You will listen as if you were in the meeting. When you get up from there, you can pick a phone and call somebody and tell them what they discussed in the meeting.
we are serving a very powerful God. And, and he calls us, you know, gods. Which means in the realm of the spirit, you can partake of what the gods see. But you must be conscious of your effort. Because each time the effort was responsive and responded to them or guided them, they consciously consulted with it. You must be in the attitude of asking God, where do we go from here? What do I do with this? Right. Now, I was talking about visions and I'm giving you one to five. And on the other main numbers, I stopped at six, which is vision. And let's go back to them now, number seven. Word of knowledge. John chapter 4, 17 to 19. Jesus Christ, ordinarily trying to preach to the woman of Samaria, may not have had great success. But immediately, the, the Lord said to her, yeah, you, you, you've rightly spoken. You don't have a husband. Even the one now that you have is not your husband. You have had so, so, and so many husbands. Duma said, I, I perceive you are a prophet. So, if he did not give her a word of knowledge, he would not have communicated the message to her. So, the word of knowledge could be a way of getting somebody's attention. Strong. Strong. Many times people have strayed into meetings or, you know, you drag them into meetings and that day God just picked them up and said things about them that nobody else knows. I have a mayor in the U.S. who is my protege. I was speaking in the church one day. Okay, I, it was, I was about to speak when he came in and the senior pastor of the church says, I should sit down that he's going around making announcements about his election in churches. So I sat down. You know, there, you know, somebody's about to preach. You say, a politician came who wants to campaign. And then he asked me to sit down. I had to obey because I'm in another man's territory. If it is my own church, he will sit down and listen to the message. So I had to obey. But you know, I was very uncomfortable. So, I was under authority. The young man finished his campaign. It was brief, five, ten minutes. He finished and was walking away with his wife. I asked them to bring him back. I didn't want to do what happened next. But I wanted to establish something. That this is the house of God. Even though I was in a foreign territory. I called him back. I said, kneel down. Let's pray for you. I said, this is the house of God. And I I next time, plan to come and worship. And during announcements, you can say the things you want to say. That is not the kind of things that you do in America. But I'm a Nigerian. I will always be a Nigerian. So as I closed my eyes and began to pray for him, the Holy Ghost said to him, so so and so on, on so so and so day, so so and so month, so so and so year. Your mother brought you as a baby looking for food into this country. You were not born in this country. She came desperately looking for a future for herself and for her children. She never knew she would have a child that would grow up and contest to be a mayor in this nation. You are like a rolling stone that gathers no moss. You have no standing in the spirit. And where you want to go, they will chew you up. But you are like a child in the heart. You are simple. And you have a wife that prays. A very young lady. And her prayers have come to me. And because of that, I will give you that position. When I give it to you, write all the wrongs and use it to serve me. Then I will give you a higher position. If you fail, then you will be forgotten immediately after that position. And will never be remembered anymore. I said, Lord, I pray that he will get it. And that's all I want to pray in Jesus' name. I opened my eyes and he was crying. He couldn't get up. He was so weak. So we helped him get, to get up. 
And as he was walking, he came back, asked my, my, my phone number. I said, keep going. The white lady at the back is my administrator. She has been my administrator in the U.S. for 23 years. I said, she will give you my phone number. So, he went, picked her phone number from her because she won't give you my cell phone number. And then he walked away. After church service, he called. And then called her and said he wanted to come and see me. And she called me and said, I'm very tired. It's been a busy day. Sunday had two meetings that day. So let's meet somewhere tomorrow around lunch, Monday, to agree to have lunch together. So we went for lunch together. And he sat across my table, looked into my eyes, and he said to me, nobody except my mother knows the things you said yesterday. How did you get them? Therefore, at the end of the day, he knelt down and said, could you be my mentor? I said, I live in Nigeria. I'm not a politician. He said, I don't care, sir. You can call me on the phone. I can talk to you. Can I? I said, why not look around here and ask any of the U.S. pastors to play that role for you? He said, I have been searching. So it is possible that through a word of knowledge, somebody that God has been trying to get his attention and he's been dancing around and won't respond. He, he just melts him. Look at the woman of Samaria. She, she, left the, she left her pot of water. She couldn't carry water. She ran to go and become an evangelist. Word of knowledge. And because you're a daughter of the Lord, you're a son of the Lord, you have the Holy Spirit, and you've been introduced to the spirit realm, all the nine charismatic gifts can function through you. You too can give a word of knowledge by the Spirit. You don't struggle about it. Just by the Spirit. Make use of your effort. Number eight. The word of God through the Bible. The Bible is so rich, you know, almost every page you turn to. That's why God spoke to Joshua. He said, meditate on it day and night. And you will have good success. Because it will tell you what to do and what not to do. If you listen to it, you will have good success. The word of God is a good effort. Make use of it to be well with you. Number nine. Word of wisdom. First Corinthians 12, 8. What did they call Ahitophel? You know, wonderful names. Because this man had this, operated the gift of word of wisdom. That no matter how intricate a situation may be, he will receive a word that will unlock the situation. Why was Daniel highly prized? The queen mother said to the king, the younger king, the son, the, her son, he says he solves enigma, he solves riddles. There's nothing that you take to him he can decode. Why? When he goes before the Lord, he will receive word of wisdom. By the effort, he will give you guidance. I pray today, and even as you listen, that the grace of God that releases gifts will envelop you. And your effort will be activated. Amen. And all these gifts of the Holy Spirit will start working from tonight in your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Word of wisdom. Number 10. God can speak to you through creation. In Numbers 22 verse 28. We read the story of Balaam and an ass, a donkey, speaking to him. It happens. What about the snake that spoke to Eve? In Luke chapter 19, verse 40, God said to the elders of Jerusalem, If you don't praise the Lord, 
the stones will cry out. And for real, the stones will have spoken. What about in Psalms 19 verse 1? David was com commanding creation to come up and speak up. They speak. They utter their voices early in the morning. The birds sing. They talk. And they understand each other. And sometimes they can bring messages to you. The rainbow in the sky. They can speak. If the sons of darkness can use them to send, communicate things, then you can. Also, command creation to send messages. Back in the east where I come from, this election has gone into a nuclear spiritual warfare. They are consulting altars that are strong. I went and I, prayed, I led prayers and prayed for someone in Abba. And a horde of bees, huge, followed me to Portacot. First of all, he went to well, anyway, we were having projects and then chased the people away. And I wasn't around. And he went straight to my study in my home in Portacot. And my children were around. And then they spoke to the bees and addressed them and then commanded them to go back to whoever sent them and bite them and bite their children and bite them in their bedroom and bite them everywhere. <laughs> so when I came back and they told me what they did, I asked them to give me five. If they were unbelievers, they'll be shaken. Because our security man, when he saw it, he said to them, it's a bad old man. And my peer said, shut up your mouth. You are not being delivered from your village mentality. You know. So I was so like, so they could send bees after me. All right, now they will see bees. So we call for bees and ask them to develop anointing and go back and deal with them in a way that they will never again try it in their lives. A few days ago, creation. So, God can speak to you through the things he has created. I remember the first time I went to a town in River State called Boni, either Boni or Nembe in Baeza. I got in the midst of the sea. I couldn't see where we were coming from and where we were going. There was no end. There was no beginning. In the middle, I just began to sing, Oh Lord my God, when I hear oh, some wonder, you cannot help but wonder. I'm from a dry land, and here am I in the middle of the sea. I can't see tree. I can't see anything. All I could see around me was just sea. And I didn't know where I was. And I don't know how those who, who drive those boats know where they are going. Just looking at what God has made. How he got water, dug a place, and filled the place with water. That's that huge. It speaks volumes to you about this God. Look at creation. And you will know. God will speak to you about who he is. Number 11. Godly counsel of mature, well-informed, up-to-date, active, spirit-filled, spirit-led believers and friends. Now, let me take it slowly. Amen. <laughs> I know some of you were like, where is he going to? Okay. Godly counsel of mature, well-informed, up-to-date, active, spirit-filled, spirit-led, believers and friends 
I am very careful to say they must be well informed, up to date in the spirit, active and spirit filled, and allow themselves to be spirit led believers and friends. Because you remember the young prophet who was killed by the old prophet. He was an older person. He had been prophesying in the land. And he thought he should be the only one God will use. And if God must use anybody, the person must connect with him. And he killed the young one. Because God had finished with him. He had allowed himself to be disconnected. And a young prophet, out of respect, obeyed him and died. That's why that mature counsel must come from somebody who is spirit-led. It could be your friends. It could be your mentor. That's a, a pastor that is doing very well in Port Harcourt. That pastor is very close to me. He agreed with his wife that they will have two children when they got married. And they had their two children and they were girls. And the wife insisted that she wants to be pregnant again and have a boy. And the husband said, it's impossible. It will not happen. So, and because of that, stayed away from the wife because he didn't want the wife to become pregnant. And that wasn't funny. So the wife now took the phone and called his spiritual father. So let me report your son to you. So the man one day left the town where he, is, you know, he resides, flew to Potakot, checked himself into a hotel and invited two of them. He said, I didn't come to Potakot to do any business. I came to Potakot because my friend, your wife reported you to me. He said that uh, you don't believe that she will have a baby boy. You agreed to have two. And you have had two. But she wants a baby boy. And he said there's no guarantee that if she has another one, it will be a baby boy. So I came so that there will be peace. I came so that two of you will be happy. You are happy, she's not. And two of you have to be happy. Can I use my position as your spiritual father to ask you to go home and sleep with your wife so she can have another baby that will be a boy? Out of respect, the young pastor said he could have asked the spiritual father, are you God? But this is his spiritual father. So, but we agreed this too. He said, yes. She doesn't deny that. But she said, the, the agreed to has not solved all the problems he had. So let's go for third one. I'm giving it to you as an instruction. And they went back home. And they were took in. And they had a baby boy. So, Yes, God can use your, your godly parents, your senior pastor, to speak to you, to guide you. And if you're obedient, you will reap, you will enjoy. You will be blessed. Number 12. Writings on the wall, I've already told you. Daniel chapter 5, 24 to 31. The writing that with which God spoke to Belshazzar. And the one with which he spoke to that man from Ghana during our meeting in Port Harcourt. Number 13. Peace of mind. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. That's the summary of the verse. When somebody proposes to you, and everybody is getting excited about the man, oh, he has a good position, he earns fast salary. He has flashy cars. Lives in well-furnished, exclusive part of Abuja. And each time you remember it, your heart literally flies away from your chest. Don't go. Because all that glitter are not gold. Peace of mind is one of the gifts God has given to you for your effort to communicate to you that God is in this business or not. If God is in a business, you have peace. When your heart palpitates and you are sweating and you are frightened, you are not at peace about anything. Don't go on with it. Your effort is saying 
It's not safe. But if you suppress the voice of your effort, and in the midst of that turbulence in your spirit, I'll, I'll continue. Whatever you see, you take. Whatever you are doing and you don't have peace of mind, don't pursue it. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but present your matter to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will flood your heart. If it does not, then back out. That's what your effort is saying. Number 14. The spirit of discernment of spirits. Your effort will be able to tell you this is a clean spirit or not. Peter and his friends were, no, it was Paul actually, ministering, and here comes this girl who was praising them and saying they were God's people. Yes, the girl was saying the truth, but the girl was possessed. I had to cast out the demon from the girl. And they gave him a thorough beating. You know, must discern the spirit that's at work. Number 15. Voice of transformed conscience. God has a way of transforming your conscience. Such a way that a living conscience should be able to say no to this. We have a judge in the house. And he has to try many cases. Sometimes he works in a team of others. And others will you know, receive money and want to give certain judgments. And he will not. And he will be a lone voice in the midst of others. Why? Because he has a living, active conscience that will not deny the innocent justice. Today, people suppress the voice of their conscience. The Bible said that their conscience are seared as if with iron. It's made dull and it can't work. But the Bible says if your conscience does not prick you or blame you, then you are bold and you can speak up. Conscience, transformed conscience, the voice of transformed conscience. Romans 9 verse 1, Hebrews 10 22. Acts 23, verse 1. Number 16, body movement in healing meetings. For those who have the gift of healing, sometimes God will tell you what sickness is healing and what part is touching by making that part of your own body move. There are some people when they are ministering healing and their ear begins to tingle. That means that somebody's ear problem is being healed. As they are ministering, they feel pain somewhere. It means somebody's pain on that part of the body. That's how they get the communication. It's being taken care of. And at that point, point in time, when they confess it and say it out, the power of God comes upon that person. And many times, it becomes obvious. and Sometimes, it's not obvious. But God communicates through the movement in your body. If you are sensitive and you minister healing and if you speak them out life comes through the word you speak and they experience their healing one day at the full gospel businessmen's fellowship international in enugu you know conference a young man had a disease in his private part that he wouldn't talk about because it was very embarrassing but i was closing a meeting for them and um, i had this unusual sensation and I said, there's someone here, you have, a, you have an uncommon infection and common challenge, a problem that you are embarrassed, you don't want to talk about in your private parts. Right now, God is healing you. People close their eyes, I just said it. I was sure what I said, so I didn't bother to say, if you are here, come out. So at the end of the meeting, when I was walking to the hotel, the man ran to me, he said, I'm the person. And then he told me what the problem was. He said, he didn't know who to tell. Because he didn't know how to talk about it. And because of that, it had lingered. He said, as I spoke, he said, heat came upon that place. And he just, said he just went to the toilet and discovered it's not there again. You know. A young man in London goes to a Pentecostal church. I don't know what he was looking for. He left London, came to Ibadan. And they gave him juju to drink. 
I don't know what he was looking for. But when he drank the juju, by the time he arrived in London, his private path has disappeared. It was flat. Nothing was there again. And their pastor is a woman. So he didn't know how to go to pastor. To tell pastor his problem. How does he urinate? You know. So he called his younger sister in London. Told her his problem. The problem and the sister said, your problem is complicated. Number one, you are an usher in the church. And you went to, uh, to a juju man. So how would you tell them in the church? Number two, our pastor is a woman. And your problem has to do with your private part. So how would you tell her? So the man was dying. So, please, don't, don't be a member of a church and go to Satan. He will punish you for coming to his side. So, I went to London because their senior pastor is my daughter. And um, so, he felt that now that I came as a man, he can come and tell me his problem. But God in his mercy did not even wait for you know, him to tell me that. I, I just began to pray. And I, again, I began to feel that God wants to heal somebody who has a challenge in that area. And as I commanded every infection and disease that malfunctioning in that part of the body now. Come on, reverse in the name of Jesus. He felt pressed back and front. So, he ran, he ran to the toilet and then pulled down his trousers. As he pulled down his trousers, he discovered that the thing, the front one has come back. <laughs> and out of excitement, out of excitement, he forgot to close the trousers. <laughs> and he was running out, calling the sister's name. People saw him and said, come on, close the thing. Finally, the last one, number 18. God, huh? 17, sorry, 17. Through miracles, signs, and wonders. We live in a country where there are all kinds of religions. Arguing religion will not get them saved. But by the manifestation of signs and wonders, it will become clear to them. Acts 13. Verse 8 through 12. Of course, you know this proconsul, Sergius Paulus, that a man, a Hebrew man called Bar Jesus, attached himself to. Last night I told you that the occultist and the Satan tried to attach themselves to the seats of power. And he was manipulating the man. And they believed him that he was the God in town. Here comes Paul trying to preach to the same man. And this bad Jesus wouldn't let him preach. He just looked at him. He said, you'll be blind for a season. And the man became blind and began to do like this. And then the proconsul was watching to see if the man would retaliate. And the man could not retaliate. He said, Paul, come, 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 sit down. Now, tell me more. And the Bible said that he believed. He believed because he saw a power superior to that of bad Jesus. If not, he wouldn't believe. So God spoke to his heart. God reached him. He had God. He got a direction on where to go because he saw a miracle. What about in the days of Elijah? This powerful prophet preached his heart out and made utter call. If God is God, come and show. If Satan Baal is God, show. Nobody responded to his utter call. But when he put together the sacrifice and ask the God that answers by fire to answer. And the Bible says, and fire broke out. In 1 Kings 18 verse 37. When the fire touched the sacrifice, all of them answered the altar call without invitation. The Bible said that they all fell down and said, the Lord he is God. The Lord from that moment, they began to serve the Lord. 
There are people who will believe you not because of what you say, but because of the signs and wonders that God will do through you. God communicates through signs and wonders. I remember in Romans chapter 15 verse 18, Paul says, it will blow your mind if I begin to tell you the things that God did through me at Illyricum. He said, how by mighty deeds and wonders he made them believe. They will not believe if you talk. But if you produce a sign in the name of the Lord, they will believe. How did God convince Pharaoh of Egypt? Words could not make him do anything. The three times when he said, I repent, was because he saw power, superior to his power. Then he believed. He believed. I believe once I've told you the story of what happened when God asked me to go to Australia to open the heavens. I didn't know what the problem was. I felt it was a spiritual language. Go and pray. Maybe they'll have a revival. I didn't know they have had drought for 12 years. And the, the trees were, have died and the animals were dying. and There was no water in the land. And so I asked him, what do I do when I get there? He said, go to a sea, a nearby river, anywhere you can find one. Dip your feet in it and command the heavens to open. So I arrived Canberra. Nigerian embassy gave me a car and driver and I had another, took another vehicle and passed us with me. We drove three hours to the nearest place where we could find water. And I asked a few of them to walk with me into the river. We dip, dip, you know, put our feet in it and we held a hand. I said, Lord, in obedience, I traveled, I flew 27 hours to come here. I command the heavens op open that your will will be done over Australia in the name of Jesus. We said amen and I prayed for them and we stepped out. Before we got into our car, it began to drizzle and I saw hefty men shouting, screaming, jumping up with bulging stomach and I was like, suddenly in my village in Nigeria, I see little children jump up when they see rain. I can't just be doing, I never knew they had not seen rain for years. So I asked them, said, I learned that there are people called Australian Bushmen. Are these ones the Bushmen? The people laughed. They said they are not sure because they were white. So where we went, by the time we got to Canberra, three hours later, we saw television, flood waters was carrying cars up and they were floating on the streets. And the newscaster says, finally, the heavens over Australia, her words, finally, the heavens over Australia have opened. He said, we have had rain today, today alone, more than we have had it cumulatively for 12 years. Okay. So it was then I understood what we came for. If I knew that they have not had rain for 12 years and God told me to go and open heavens, I would not have the courage to go. Because the problem was too much for me to think about. But he made sure I didn't know until we finished. I flew back to Nigeria. The Prime Minister of Australia heard about it. I don't know how the story got to him. He called me and said, you must come back. I said to him, I didn't do anything wrong. He said, no, it's not anything wrong. We want you to lead us to pray the way you prayed in that river. I told my wife, she said, go. So they bought a business class ticket for me. This time I didn't pay for the ticket, so I flew. And he assembled all the legislators, all ambassadors, all the governors of the provinces to a prayer breakfast. He says, pray again the way you prayed that day. Now, listen to me. If I had paid him a, a courtesy call and told him to gather all his people, I want to lead them in prayers, the man will look at me and say, we are very busy people. You know, the government matters, you know, issues, you know, you... They are so overwhelming. Uh, thank you for visiting. He will shake me and ask them to show me the door to go back. But something happened that got his attention. He now was the one that called for the meeting at his own expense and paid for me to come back. God has given you something that can make the whole world stand still because of you. And up until now, maybe you have just walked with 
one level of grace whereby you have lived as a Christian but you have not been able to communicate through or the Holy Ghost to use you to communicate to your environment in a, war, in a way that your world around you will respond to you. Saul went out to look for donkeys and he met Samuel and after that meeting he became the captain of the army of Israel. He didn't follow through the civil service cadre. He didn't go for interview. He didn't go to their military school. And he didn't come from the tribe of Judah, where kings come from. He came from the tribe of Benjamin. Everything about him was very unlikely. But he had an encounter that kind of suspended every protocol and took him where nothing but God can take him to. I stand in the presence of God today. At this year's effort conference to ask the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and my God, the one that has given me testimonies that I cannot tell you. The one who rules in the affairs of men. The one who made creation and walks through them to express himself. The God who designed a Ford and gave it to his people. May that God today activate in your life a supernatural effort. That will cause you to be spiritually sensitive in such a way that no man, no spirit will be able to deceive you. No power will be able to overcome you. By the reason of that effort he's given to you, you will stand and speak and your world will stand still. When it is needed, you will communicate in the language they must understand and they must respond. If before now they have treated you as you as if you don't exist from this night the opposite will be the case they will now begin to function as if they cannot live without you your families that have not spoken to you and look for you for a long time will not have the next meeting without you when they gather and you are not there they will say they are not complete Amen. when they gather and you are not there they will say they have not formed the quorum Amen. when you speak it will be like an oracle has spoken Amen. by the power of the effort you will flow with the grace of word of wisdom Amen. and even from tonight let the grace that produces miracles, signs and wonders that makes you a wonder in the midst of your people that causes them to respond when you speak now be activated in your life 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 in the name of Jesus Whatever you touch will sense the power of God and respond. Amen. If they were dead, they will come back. Amen. Dead businesses will resurrect. Amen. Dead good relationships will resurrect. Amen. And sicknesses will be healed by the power that flows through your arms. Amen. Even as I speak, even as I speak, at the sound of my voice, I command our bodies to respond. Wherever there's a sickness, now, in the head area, in the eyes, in the ears, in the organs of the body, in the joints of the bones, <laughs> in the nerves of the back, in the spinal cord, down to the waist, down to the knees, down to the ankles of your feet, Wherever there are diseases, let them hear the word of the Lord. 
is a time for healing of our bodies let them be healed in the name of Jesus Christ those voices that come in the night and won't let you sleep I silence them forever they will speak no more in the name of Jesus Christ those altars of affliction raise against you and your family tonight in the name of Jesus I command them to scatter in the name of Jesus Christ those things projected into your belly inside your body I command the windows to open the doors to open come on at the count of three let them leave your body one two three Speak to the waters that have swallowed what belongs to you to now return them. I speak to earth that they dug and buried some things that belong to some. Oh, earth, open and vomit their possessions. I command the winds of the air that carry away things by sorcery. Oh, four wings of the earth, return. Whatever belongs to anybody in this house that was blown into the air at the count of three, bring them back. One, two, three. Return in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I activate the grace of the miraculous. The power of signs and wonders. Tonight, as we leave from here, let it become functional. Our neighbors we see, our spouses we see, our children we see, people around us we see. And as to what God will do with each and every one of us, no mouth can tell. Tonight I release you to go and display the glory of your Father. I release you to show forth the fullness of the power embedded in the effort. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ let creation respond to you wherever you go let it come behind you thank you everlasting father we give you all the glory and may the enemy not be able to silence anybody's effort again in Jesus mighty name we pray put your hands and give him praise tired of clapping those hands if you can clap if you can shout if you can celebrate God's servant if you can celebrate God's servant if you can celebrate God's servant go ahead keep clapping keep clapping keep clapping keep clapping clap like you receive something clap like something has happened clap like a healing has taken place a miracle has taken place. A wonder has taken place. You are not clapping. You are not shouting. You are not clapping. You are not shouting. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Clap. Shout. Clap! Shout! Clap! Come on, give him praise! Give him praise! Give him praise! Give him praise! Come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on! which God's servant have deposited may it be permanent in our lives may God be made manifest in the name of Jesus have your flag in your hand and give me five minutes 
if you have no flag you've written something in the paper because I want to I want to open doors of nations I want to open doors of, I have the key just hold your flag if you have one you can borrow from these walls return it when you finish return it when you finish I don't want to look for the flag I buy them a scripture my face is in the poster so even if I preach for five minutes it's allowed Exodus chapter 2 verse number 3 please 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 stay connected to me for the next few minutes I beg you Exodus chapter 2 verse 3 and when she could no longer hide him, tell your neighbor, I cannot be hidden. If you say it better, you are coming out of a covering. Can you shout, I cannot be hidden? Shout, I cannot be covered. I'm about to promote somebody. <laughs> and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an of the bulrushes and dubbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and laid it by the flags of the river bank. Why she could no longer hide him? These few minutes that the Lord have used his servant to put us in the place of speed. I just want to tell you for the next few minutes that as you walk out of this effort, you are walking out of every covering. Whatever they used to hide you, not to fulfill your destiny, I see you coming out of that covering. Whatever they used to hide you, so that you will not get married, I see you coming out of that hiding. Whatever they used to hide you, for your destiny not to speak, I see you coming out of that hiding. I speak upon you today, as you wave your flag, the nations will respond to you. As you wave your flag, the nations will open up to you. As you wave your flag, the nations will surrender to you. Can you lift up your hand and shout, yes, 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 yes. says when she could no longer hide him can you say I am beyond the hiding you as I'm talking right now your superiors are that doing mago mago for you not to be promoted they are hearing the sound of my voice the powers fighting your next level they are hearing the sound of my voice as you wave that paper as you wave that flag in the realm of the spirit your doors are opening up your doors are opening up your doors are opening up can you shout yes 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 Say when she could no longer hide him. Can I announce to you? I just got the news. You are going to be who they say you cannot be. If your amen is loud, that will happen to you first. They are said that Moses by destiny should be killed because Pharaoh had passed the decree. That every child that is born by the Hebrew women, even if you kill them, they will pay you, they will give you money for killing them. But the 
there was this child there is something inside him can I tell you something they could not kill you as a child they cannot kill you as an adult if are you sure you heard what I said they could not kill you as a child they cannot kill you as an adult they could not hold you down as a child they cannot hold you down as an adult I speak upon your destiny I speak upon your life I speak upon your business I speak upon your finances I speak upon your system you are beyond their covering you are beyond their hold you are Somebody shout it, yeah! Moses mother Eku, took the child. She did everything in her power to cover him, to hide him. But when she could no longer he get where the cover person rich. He get where the oppressed person rich. You, you, where they have hidden your seat, your position. As I'm talking, your seat will come and look for you. I speak it as an oracle of God. I speak with the mouthpiece of Jehovah. That thing that belongs to you is coming to you. That seat is coming to you. That position is coming to you. That finance is coming to you. No devil can stop you. No devil can stop you. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is by the Holy Ghost. Somebody say yeah. Hold out your flag. Hold that that paper. I don't care the country you are holding. As long as it's a country, the whole other countries, they will open up to you. You, 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 poor devil. Life we apologize to you for hiding you too long. Talk to me. I said life will apologize to you for hiding you too long. Your organization will apologize to you for keeping you too long. Somebody said, I cannot be hidden again. Wait, tomorrow, tomorrow evening, tomorrow evening, this place will catch fire. Because, in Lemozo, what we have, let me, can I tell you what we have for tomorrow? While we are in church here, things will be happening in your village. If your amen come better, you will, you, will, you will see it. While we are in church here, the very place where they have met the meeting that you cannot prosper. While we are here, Holy Ghost will put fuel and put fire in that place and set it on fire. I speak it in the name of Jesus. 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 Can somebody jump up and shout, I believe it. Let me let you go. Make I let you go. Make I not go turn here to all night. Let me let you go. Listen. Listen to me. Listen to me very well. The Bible says, and the mother of Moses, he took the child and set the child by the flags of the river. Listen. As you are holding these flags in your hand, Businesses from other nations. You, you don't seem to understand. Your, that your account that has not had any dollar and pounds for a while is about to answer something. Your account is about as I'm talking. Your account is hearing my voice. Your bank manager will be forced to know you because something is about to hit that account. It can come from America. It can come from Europe. Dollars are coming. Bow 
Jesus is coming. Euro is coming. Yen is coming. Nara is coming. Somebody shall die and receive it. Can I make you pray to pray as soon as you go? Lift that thing up. Say nations of the world. Open up. Listen. Listen. If you're not praying, are you do yourself. So nations of the world, I speak to you by the anointing in the effort, by the corporate anointing of all the men of God in the effort. I speak to you, nations. Open up now. Open your mouth and pray. Command the nations to open. Command your business to open. Command your womb to open. Command your finances to be released. Command your doors to open. Do not suggest it. Command it. Command it to open. I command you to open. I command the nations to open. Let the continents open. I receive it. The continental breakthrough. I receive it now. Lubaka Tudaya. Speak to your company. Speak to where you walk. Command it to open. Command it to open. Command it to open. Command it to open. In the name of Jesus. One more prayer because of time. Put your right hand on your forehead or the other. Use the other hand to hold that paper on the floor. Shout, I cannot be hidden again. Shout, the covering has expired. You didn't talk. Say, the covering has expired. Say one more time. The covering has expired. Listen to me before you pray. When the covering is active, hear me, hear me well. When the covering is active, people will know you. They will debate your matter to help you or to promote you. Somebody will stand up among them and, and give a reason why you should not be helped, why you should not be promoted, why you should not be assisted, and everybody will believe it. And they will keep your matter aside. Shut, Lord. The covering has expired. Can you make it a decree for the next one minute? Lord, they will see me in my field of work. They will begin to value me now. I receive the promotion. I receive the value. I receive the grace. I receive the upliftment. Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Lord, the covering over my life has expired. Over my ministry has expired. The covering is gone. I receive the favor. I receive the promotion. I receive the upliftment. I receive the contact. I receive that helper. I receive that favor. I receive that push. The covering is over. In the name of Jesus. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Can I tell you something? Please, when you are coming tomorrow. By the way, can I announce to you? Tomorrow, Apostle Moses Grandior. Oh, you don't know who is coming. That's why you could not shout. You have no idea. He is, he is, he is alias God's mobile blazing fire. He will be here tomorrow night. Now, now, what, can I tell you what you will do? This night, when you get home, before you sleep, look for a plain sheet of paper. A4 precisely if you have, but if you don't have, tear notebook. Plain sheet of paper. Everything that you are tired of, that is still in your life, consciously write all down. Are you listening to me? Anything that you are tired of, loneliness, sickness, backwardness, disappointment, whatever it is that has, that has kept 
tears in your eyes secretly deliberately script it down when you are coming tomorrow bring the paper are you listening to me you will listen you will bring it here when the man of God has done his own and has finished and he has gone we go bring your paper are you listening to me by the time we bring your paper there will be an exchange I will take what you have written I will give you another thing. Yeah. Your amen did it. You don't, you don't understand. Yeah. Those things you wrote. Listen, make sure you write them. The one you don't write, Nabi said you still want them. The one you don't want again, write it. And come with it. And don't come alone. Can I take a seat from you?